I did the math and here's how much gravity I reckon the Death Star would have. Now, is this information you need in your life? Of course it's not. Is it information you want in your life? If the answer is no, you're in the wrong place. If the answer is yes, let's do this. Now, the equation for gravitational acceleration is this. It's just the gravitational constant times the mass of the object over the radius of the object squared. We know the size of the Death Star and that it's 120 kilometers in diameter. We know the gravitational constant. We just need to figure out what the mass would be. So I did a whole bunch of stuff that I'm not gonna go through because the answer is disappointing, but I did a whole bunch of stuff where I compared a lot of different things within the Death Star from the structure that we can see and its internal components. And I thought I was being very clever by <laughs> comparing it to things that we know the weights of <laughs> in our world. Uh, but no matter what, at the end of the day, it came out with a gravity of 0.0000145 meters per second. Even if the Death Star is a solid ball of steel, the gravity is still 0.13 meters per second squared. It is not strong enough in any way to be able to replicate gravity, which means there has to be something else going on. Now we can immediately assume gravity plating or I don't know, magic, but I actually have a solution that I'm quite proud of. So here we go. It is in my scientific estimation that the hypermatter reactor at the center of the Death Star must be producing enough of an energy density to simulate gravity. Now, we know that Aldron is around the same size as Earth. We know that Leia can walk on the Death Star. So therefore we can assume that the gravity that is simulated on the Death Star must be similar to the gravity on Earth, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. So that means that the hypermatter reactor must be able to produce enough relativistic energy to simulate the energy that Earth's mass would uh, be converted to using Einstein's E equals MC squared formula, which comes out at 5.37 by 10 to the 41 joules. Now we know that it's able to provide 10 to the 33 watts of energy, which is a joule per second, to the laser, but that's after transporting it and you always have energy loss in transport. So it's within reason to think that the Death Star using a hypermatter reactor would be able to produce 10 to the 41 joules. And nobody needs to look at this any closer. Just accept my wisdom and authority. Follow me on YouTube and, oh, if you like this t-shirt, I designed it and you can buy it. Okay, bye.